Good evening. Uh, thank you for coming. Perhaps it's unfair to generalize about a country as if a country spoke with a single voice. Nevertheless, in my reading, America's reading of contemporary world history is often illusory. First, America imagines it has the capacity to make its own history. And second, America imagines that what's important historically is not what's behind us, but only what's ahead of us. Acting on those dubious assumptions, America stumbled in Vietnam and again predictably in Iraq. Tonight we've asked Suha Oskan to mitigate the historic illiteracy quotient, at least at SciArc. Students of architecture may be surprised to hear that a well-known contemporary historian, Samuel Huntington, recently announced that the entire 20th century was an aberration. In his book, The Clash of Civilizations, Huntington claims that the century-long capitalist-communist divide is now in history's dustbin. The 21st century, according to Huntington's prognosis, will exorcise the 20th century entirely and simply extend the 19th. If Huntington is correct, the brutal collisions of race, ethnicity, and religion that have characterized world history for much of the last 2,000 years will again be among the primary driving forces in the geopolitical world of tomorrow, which suggests a radical revision of the conventional globalization ideal. At the heart of the interminable race-religion conflagration is the intersection of Islam and the West. At the heart of that intersection is the nation of Turkey. At the heart of the Turkey question is the colossal world city of Istanbul and likely to be at the heart of the exegesis of contemporary Istanbul is Suha Oskan. Istanbul is the conflict of civilizations prototype, part Europe, part Asia, dividing Europe and Asia, connecting Asia with Europe. Christianity, Islam, secular, religious, medieval, or modern. Several months ago, I sat with Suha at an architect's Istanbul home on a hillside in Asia over, overlooking the Bosphorus to Istanbul in Europe. Time past and time present and a speculation on the promise of time future lit up the night. Istanbul's history is Istanbul's history is to belong to history while it simultaneously reimagines that history. Suha Oskan is an architect, a planner, a critic, and a primary juror in the in the international architecture discourse. He lives in Geneva, he lives in Istanbul. Perhaps he belongs to both, and perhaps he belongs to neither. For many years, Suha managed the well-known Aga Khan Award Program, which acknowledges architecture and planning of special quality in what has often been labeled the developing world. In his capacity as planner, juror, and architect, he continues to have a substantial role, not only in the conceptual design and planning of the future of Central Asia, but perhaps ultimately in the evolution of the clash of civilizations narrative too. Suha, in a sense, is bringing us a contemporary urban history lesson. 
In another sense, he is a primary player in that urban drama. Please welcome Suha Oskan to Syark. Thank you very much, Eric, and I thank you all for ending, uh, I'm sure, a busy day by listening to me. I appreciate that. I also thank, along with Eric, Wendy, who organized everything for this lecture. I shall be telling a story of Istanbul. It's basically how can we mitigate or how can we harness the change. It was a city of uh, one million population. First, uh, let me tell you it is where it is. This is Istanbul. This is the Strait of Bosporus. This is the continent of Europe. This is Asia. So literally, it is the only city which bridges two continents. Asia on this side and uh, uh, Europe on this side and there are uh, hundred thousands of people for one reason or the other they cross almost to intercontinental trips to go from one part of the city to the other and uh, you very well know it is a rule of the game you cannot solve the problems of urban or intra-urban movements by only facilitating the transport or infrastructure. If you do that, you encourage more people to come to the center of the city, which is in this part, and the more you do that, the congestion gets more acute and unresolvable. And the city has grown in the last 40 years from 1 million to 14 million. It's huge, and it's putting pressure on the very precious uh, forest land on this side, and the encroachments are uh, more or less imminent and uh, the whole thing is that how can we uh, help the cha to change or to reduce the pressure on the urban center of the city basically what we thought that if we can organize two sub-centers on two sort of uh, one is very precious natural uh, land, the other one is uh, disused industrial land. How can we uh, change the center of gravity of the city so that people would live and work on either sides without uh, much reason to, 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 to commute? So these are the illustrations of uh, Eric's uh, introductory remarks, and uh, uh, this is. Uh, uh, Hagia Sophia, that is the sort of the masterpiece of Christianity, and uh, uh, and this is uh, blue mosque just opposite to each other in, in dialogue. And here you see the whole uh, city. This is on automatic, I think. What can I do? Uh, uh, it goes on its own. And uh, here is the spectacular view of the two continents, how they are connected. There are two bridges. Uh, connecting them together and there's an underpass being built and uh, uh, there is a sort of project for the uh, third bridge and our aim is that I tell the general public is that we may not solve the problems of the building of the uh, third bridge but probably we can avoid the fourth one if we are intelligent enough to allocate new uses and create new centers. So here you see the growth of the industrial and residential districts of Istanbul. And Istanbul master plan has basically three uh, aspects. One of them is that we want no encroachments in the forest land. And we want no people polluting the drinking water of Istanbul, which is collected in these areas. And the third one, we want no industries in Istanbul because country needs so many industries, so many cities need industries, they should go elsewhere. Istanbul is really uh, suffocated with the excessive use of popula excessive population and excessive installations of industries. So with these three pr pr premises, we thought that if we can create two sub-centers on, on both sides, 
uh, that would uh, help to alleviate the pressure on the main city. So what I'm going to talk to you is the international search for solutions uh, for these two areas. One of them is called Küçük Çekmece, this is in the west, and it is very close to the Istanbul airport, here is the airport. And this area, which used to be a, a very fashionable beach only 20 years ago, but now it's so polluted that uh, one cannot even uh, talk about it. And, and you see the, uh, one of the major connections between Asia and Europe, not the main motorway, but an important connection is going through that area. And uh, we want to create uh, a new sub-center for cultural and recreational uses to attract people for the purpose of culture uh, to this area as opposed to go to the center of the city. And the problems are there, there are each and every uh, sector has certain conditions, so there are two municipalities uh, involved in it, but it is not an unresolvable problem. And uh, here you see the landscape from above and how uh, spectacular it is and how badly uh, land is used is also evident in here. And you can uh, see that uh, there was no consideration whatsoever because it was so far away from the Istanbul metropolitan area or uh, historic center, I would say. Uh, they basically ignored the existence of this area and uh, there was uh, makeshift construction and the road has become a big scar in this uh, uh, very fragile landscape. And you can see the interchange, uh, again distribution of the roads, and you can see the regular urban structure of Istanbul, which I would say rather uh, tragic, if uh, not only ugly and uh, inefficient and uh, unintelligent, but I think it's a very tragic urbanization which occurred in the uh, <coughs> last half century. And uh, in order to search for solutions for this area, we thought that, that we should invite uh, people or architects who are more conversant with the values of the 21st century. You know, these are the rising values which no one objects today. It is the green, uh, conservation of energy, and uh, protection of nature, and uh, whatnot. We have identified three groups to compete. One of them was the Dutch group. You may know them from the Hanover uh, Fair and many other buildings, led by uh, Winnie Maas, and that is MVRDV uh, group. And we asked them to uh, uh, bring a proposal for this area. And they called their project uh, Lagoon City. And Lagoon City meaning that uh, they built into this isthmus or the, the, the land uh, bridge connecting two sides of the area. And this is the uh, lake side, this is the sea side. And, and they have uh, uh, offered a, a new uh, setup in order to dig and build in the area. And one, uh, you consider that area, which would be the sort of harbor, or a yacht harbor, and this area uh, was also particularly interesting there. Of course, this idea of digging into the, the sandy beach here, this is the sandy beach, and this is another part of it, and there is an old bridge built by Sinan somewhere here. Uh, digging into this area in order to uh, develop it and solve the problems was uh, a bit surprise for us, because this was the area that we wanted to protect, and the architects thought that they should dig and build into that. But we were ready to consider this idea, and they made their analysis by comparing with the 
other uh, projects elsewhere happened in order to uh, give us the scale of the project. And uh, then, uh, as I pointed out earlier, they have proposed a huge uh, interchange of traffic and interchange of buildings and uh, they propose to build into that area in order to have the concentration on the area which I previously shown you where the uh, main the buildings are done. Then after digging the marina here, then they propose to build into the marina the buildings that they wanted to have. And uh, you can see the marina was later filled up with the uh, buildings that were needed. And uh, uh, even though it took us by some surprise, but the land developers in the area where we were meeting in the jury lobbied very heavily for the project because this is exactly what they wanted to have. And uh, they had some analysis of uh, noise barriers and, and the hotel, which you'll see later, uh, used for that purpose. And this is the model that you can see. And this kind of uh, overbuilding was not uh, what we were aspiring to have. Basically, it was, uh, as I can say that uh, for the third time, it was a sort of surprise for us. But it had a tremendous support from the local people because they thought that this is what they should be doing. And in fact, it is a very weak uh, soil condition here. And Istanbul, as you know, you know, uh, like Los Angeles, every now and then it shakes with earthquakes. And uh, here is the, the part which took us by a very pleasant surprise because a concentration on a, an area which is not particularly valuable or very uh, uh, useful and intense use of that part and taking all the traffic and absorbing it in this uh, area by bringing people in, uh, uh, we found as the jury uh, uh, good solution. And in that jury we had Michael Sorkin from New York and we have Sumit Junsai from Thailand and uh, 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 <coughs> Elias Torres Tour as the uh, architect from Barcelona who involved with many of the large scale projects. So without uh, uh, further elaborating on the project, this is the sort of kind of lifestyle. They transform the whole area as a dialogue between the buildings and the marina and the water. And uh, this uh, particular solution immediately found uh, a very sympathetic client uh, to be built. I don't know when and how and where, but that was also uh, very exciting for them. And here you see the whole thing. The second uh, project was from Japan, uh, Kengo Kuma, whom you, you may know. It's a very uh, notable architect of the younger generation of Japanese, or the new generation of Japanese architects. And uh, Kengo Kuma had an idea of bridging the landscape. It was uh, a very courageous, uh, very radical move, and he proposed a whole new blanket over the area. He just covered it up uh, with these uh, blankets going over by connecting the landscapes, but at the same time bringing a new urban structure. And, uh, and he also proposes some new developments in order to finance the project by opening some canals here, like Venice, and allowing building around that, and also uh, a water passage so that the water can circulate and clean itself in time. And here is the uh, relationship of the green and the, and the water and, and the highway. And here are the areas which he proposes to connect in order to allow the water circulation between the lake and the sea and also have a new construction. And this is the, uh, the, the, the most radical view of uh, what the Chengokuma proposes. 
needless to say, we fell in love with it. You know, we liked this idea of having a clean green blanket over the city and putting all the buildings underneath and having some holes to, in order to bring light from above. And needless to say, this was uh, several sizes large for Turkey, even to imagine. But we have given a very careful consideration of an idea like this, because by the time an radical idea of this sort becomes an applicable planning decision, it uh, takes some time, there may be compromises, or at least there would be some dialogue with the uh, local values and the uh, realities. And uh, uh, <coughs> this aspect of uh, Kuma's project, these are all multi-million dollar uh, residences, of course, very close to Istanbul, and these artificial canals, and uh, a nice uh, sort of interaction with the green and water and lodging. And uh, it was uh, also very sympathetic to, to, to everyone to have this kind of real estate. This is not one of the most uh, uh, sought after places of Istanbul, but it's densely populated basically by informal housing. So bringing something of this class into the area, of course, was very much favored not only by us as the jury, but also by the local authorities as a viable solution to uh, elevate the land values uh, of the area. And here you see the model of uh, what I call blankets, what he calls uh, bridging the landscape elements uh, of uh, Kuma. And here is another view of uh, this uh, uh, landscape. And the third project uh, came from uh, Ken Yang and the uh, uh, English planning group Lulian Davis. And Ken Yang, uh, its commitment you may know, is very much to the ecology and ecological sustenance in the cities and even high-rise buildings. And he nicknamed this project as Ecostructure. And the uh, Ecostructure project had even a sort of logo type uh, identity and he put uh, his uh, criteria that has driven him for the solution rather clearly that uh, the, his idea was uh, re-establishing the ecological uh, harms that has been done to the area by uh, uh, re-establishing the relationships. And as you can see, like uh, all the th all three uh, projects, to our amazement, he also kept the road. We in the jury thought that you know, if there's so much uh, superstructure to be done or infrastructure to be done, why not to put the road you know, under and build over it? But instead, uh, many projects kept the road as it is, as a as a given, and they worked on it. And uh, what uh, Ken Yang has done is that he basically analyzed the values of the site in order to uh, have the view and the uh, water collection and uh, uh, he also wanted to harness the uh, populated areas by better housing and he proposed uh, buildings of very limited uh, nature but very intense. And what he did is that he put the marina at the best place, which was the suggestion of the engineers. And in order to finance the marina and the project, he put an 80-story high, seven-star or 20-star hotel. I don't know who would come there, but uh, a, 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 a pro, a, a, an aspect to finance the project. But on the other hand, there's a match factory here. He proposed some hotel-type developments here in order to offset the cost of the project. So in many respects, uh, what he has proposed was uh, contained a very good analysis of the, uh, of the site and the values. And uh, uh, on top of it, he has taken various aspects of nature, like the ecological structure before, and also the, the, the water circulation, 
because this lake is uh, very dramatically badly polluted. Even we control all the uh, drainage systems coming into the lake, still it will take more than 20 years to clear itself with the natural forces. And uh, uh, Ken Yang helps to have the, the water circulate a uh, little bit more efficiently in order to, to, to bring it. And his urban structure, as uh, I said, you know, some touristic developments on this side, and uh, the marina on this side, and the cultural and the business uh, setting on the main uh, uh, parts of the project. And this is one of the, the best uh, uh, courses for uh, uh, sailing or uh, doing Olympic uh, uh, water sports uh, contests and which is also being considered for Turkish Olympic bid as a part of sports facilities are important. And uh, he analyzed the uh, intercity movement and the within city movement and he also has proposed some uh, 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 interventions in pointed areas. And you can see he was he has this claim that uh, when the uh, landscapes are divided by big scars like railroads and motorways and whatever, the ecological uh, bridge of the flora and fauna does not work. And he professes that there should be ecological br bridges to bring uh, <coughs> species from one side to the other with natural uh, uh, connection. So this was his uh, limited intervention when we compare it to what uh, Kendo Kuma has, has proposed. And he brings about a completely new uh, uh, landscape and urban structure. And this is the old match factory that I mentioned. And these are the five-star hotels and the touristic developments. Uh, basically, he uh, allows uh, larger investments to offset the cost of it, not a structure which allows people to participate with their own land and whatever. In any case, this whole land is uh, 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 listed as a natural uh, 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 protection, uh, protection area. So that was uh, perhaps an intelligent thing to do because it has to be done by one hand. So, uh, needless to say, the winning uh, project was Ken Yang's project, and uh, uh, the project is still in the uh, process of being negotiated by uh, the consultant architect and the local authorities. For the second project, Kartal area. This is the area uh, of Kartal in the east of Istanbul on the Asian side. And these are famous Princess Islands. And, uh, uh, and this is the industrial area which was uh, very much uh, popular and uh, productive in uh, 19, since early 1960s onwards. So it was more or less the, the heart of the Turkish industry and the land was uh, very cheap. Actually it was very cheap even when we started the project. I'll tell you the story of what happened to the land values there. And as you uh, could have seen in the previous uh, slides, uh, it is rather close. It's only a uh, little bit more than 10 miles far away from Istanbul. And we wanted to have a, a set of decisions, planning decisions along the coastline, the whole thing. And uh, this is the land which will have a particularly uh, special legislation to be uh, uh, developed. And you can see the, the industrial settings, and most of them are, are disused. And this site used to have 
the most polluting uh, cement factory in the history of industry perhaps and nobody could live around here because you know it is directly causing many of the lung diseases and the <coughs> country was uh, intelligent enough to remove it and at the hilltop here you will see Uh, at the uh, hilltop here, there was a quarry which they used to bring the uh, uh, stones for the cement factory uh, by digging the area. It's a vast area. It is uh, 555 hectares, which should be around 1,200 acres, and uh, we aim to have a minimum uh, 2 million people in the hinterland and we wanted to create more than 100,000 new jobs so that this would be a real sub-center in all uh, 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 aspects of the world. Well, so you can see the standard uh, urbanization of Istanbul that is, you know, 1960s onwards apartment walk-up blocks and they're very close to each other five meters away from the uh, uh, street and just lined up one after the other and uh, the this is the site of the cement factory these are the in industrial areas producing chipboards and some of them producing the ceramics uh, with, with and uh, bathroom fittings and uh, everything you can imagine and opposite uh, these are the factory areas and uh, uh, some of the factories, actually most of the factories uh, apart from the petty industries they have been so successful that they moved already out to more uh, uh, <coughs> to wider spaces in order to have more land and more comfortable transport mechanisms so they had already left. So what this project uh, uh, basically did was we were making these people, the owners of these industries, to new land speculators or new developers of the place. So with the uh, architectural gossip of the project, the land prices from $70 per square meter went up to 700 now it is even increasing more because it has a spectacular uh, view of the Princess Islands. It is more like a holiday resort, uh, no traffic, no nothing, just uh, a couple of miles outside Istanbul and uh, Kartal is this area that we are looking at. And of course, uh, that kind of a view, and with this quarry, which collected water in time, has become a man-made important landscape element. It became one of the most sought-after places in, in the whole area for people who wanted to have a view. You know, the, the ones who wanted to have a view of the quarry, they uh, uh, considered themselves lucky. This is the main motorway coming from uh, uh, Istanbul and connecting it to Asia. And this is the area where we are talking about. And we invited uh, three uh, architects, judged by the same jury as I said, Michael Sorkin, Sumit Jumsai, myself, the mayor of Istanbul, and Elias Torres Tur. Uh, and the uh, uh, leader of the uh, director of the planning bureau and we invited uh, three architects who had left some mark in the contemporary history of uh, urban development and you know the work of Masmiliano uh, Fuxas he is a visionary and is at the same time an architect uh, with uh, a tremendous quality of the uh, mature generation of architects of our times, I would say. So Massimiliano is not taking any comments from me. I don't know what went wrong. Ah. Okay, uh, 
you know, we, this is, I think, and I want you to, you to see the animation that uh, he has done, how he developed his ideas. It may be taking some time to uh, uh, load, so let us be a couple of seconds patient with his proposal. And this is uh, how he analyzes the area. He brings this sort of green link to the area and uh, he, he sketches out by increasing the shoreline with uh, some uh, cultural uses, in, in, in putting some new lakes into the area and connecting the, the quarry lake above and some greenery around that and bringing it down. So his uh, idea was to sort of have these transport lines as they are and taking the uh, the, the road underground uh, as it passes the uh, Kartal area and uh, uh, to uh, bring back the east-west uh, uh, relationship of the streets which were cut by the industrial areas. And uh, it, uh, it refers to some kind of a Parisian type of urban structuring as uh, you can see, it is uh, the housing around courtyards uh, was uh, put on one side and uh, large patches of green he proposed on this side. And uh, uh, he brought back the, the ro ro road network, which sh should have been naturally uh, uh, bringing the two sides together, as you can see. And uh, the basic problem we had with this proposal is that in order to have this kind of green area, which is now occupied by the uh, industrial, in industrialists, you need to make a massive uh, land swap and or massive expropriation. It is possible when you have a master plan, but it takes years uh, to realize that. So we had to uh, be very careful about this idea if the municipality is left with a huge uh, land uh, exchange program before even starting the, uh, uh, the construction would not be very, very easy. So you can see the whole uh, urban structure of uh, Masmiliano Puxas. He proposed high-rise buildings very intelligently on the top when they are accessible and some sort of low-rise buildings around the uh, uh, quarry area and bringing down the whole landscape in some continuity all the way down to the sea. And he increased the shoreline by uh, uh, digging into the water or bringing water in and uh, also proposed some high-rise buildings on the shore. So basically his uh, uh, view or his uh, uh, urban structure, uh, stacking ambition was was the same. So you can see the whole project from uh, uh, <coughs> north to south and uh, uh, very strong uh, uh, Im imagery he, he proposed in order to cultivate a new identity for the for the whole area. These are this is the architecture that he proposes and these are the cultural buildings and some uh, uh, housing uh, and this is the housing on the on the other side so he was very courageous to, to propose all these things and uh, of course there are some PC and uh, 
and this is uh, north south view and here you see the whole uh, area to be developed with uh, some kind of financial district of istanbul and having low rise buildings along here and here south to north uh, you see the cultural buildings here and uh, the land uh, problem that I mentioned over here, but very dense and rather sophisticated urban structuring in, the, in this area that he proposed. The second architect whom we invited uh, it was uh, Kisho Kurukawa, whom you may know, we lost him two weeks ago. And this was one of the last projects that he must have ever uh, done uh, for Istanbul. And uh, Kisho is a member of the Metabolism Group. You know that they always uh, professed for a single large mega structure as solutions for the urban projects. You know, Arata Isazaki and the Kisho Kurukawa were the proponents of that. And Kisho here proposed one long building here, which would go all through the uh, site and there is a continuity of water from quarry all the way down here coming down and uh, uh, high-rise buildings uh, here uh, as the uh, financial district which is more or less the less uh, valuable land in this area because for obvious reasons the seashore is very valuable and this quarry area is unique and this area needed some kind of uh, encouragement. So altogether it was a uh, very intelligent and uh, realistic uh, proposal. And uh, he has also proposed substantial infrastructure as relationship with the sea and sea transport. And he uh, brought up new accesses uh, for, for traffic. And uh, uh, the, he even uh, had uh, <coughs> solutions for the particular uh, points in, uh, in the area. And here you see the, uh, the major uh, uh, buildings and the configurations of these and how they would be uh, uh, envisaged by the architect. And he also compared the scales of these projects to the uh, places that you would know, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, Place des Etoiles, uh, Place de, Re de Real, and uh, places like that. And uh, uh, this was his uh, final uh, project. You just imagine one continuous building, you know, coming all the way down here. And there are some intersections with the cultural uses and some landmarks and some high-rise buildings along this way. And uh, uh, frankly, we found the project spectacular because it was genuine and it would give an image to a place which is more or less the industrial wasteland. And uh, uh, people would talk about it, people would uh, like to have it. But how do you do it? especially even it was a, a sort of uh, land development by one large firm it may be possible or it would be possible in autocratic regimes like you know any kind of dictat dictatorship or communism and whatever but turkey is a free market uh, system so you had to slice these things we thought very hardly and asked each and every individual developer to put a part of it how long will it take four years, 10 years, 50 years. And it was uh, a responsibility that we couldn't bear to, to propose. Uh, however, uh, even at the first sight, many of the people, journalists, it was an uh, assessment which was open to public. You know, only jury deliberations were closed, but all the presentations were done exactly in this format. Uh, the people would ask questions, like a conference. And uh, uh, many people even lobbied, you know, saying that, look, this is what Istanbul should have, but uh, we will come what we already decided. This is the night view of the uh, same area, this is from north to south. 
And the third proposal by Zaha Hadid. And uh, Zaha Hadid had a completely different approach, both uh, content-wise and uh, also context-wise. Context Contextually, she took the land as a, a piece which was uh, substantially uh, erased, disfigured. And uh, she stitched back some relationships. These are on old property lines, on old roads, on, uh, on, on basically the traces like in some kind of a palimpsest. And these traces they have el elaborated in uh, various forms and to turn them into ac ac access accessibilities in the area. In short, uh, it responded uh, directly to the land ownership pattern, which may not be good, land ownership pattern itself, but to use it as a planning instrument uh, was uh, something very intelligent. And uh, this uh, south, uh, sorry, east-west stitching of the south and connecting uh, north-south roads all together brought an urban pattern which she uh, elaborated in some uh, architectonic form. And then she developed uh, a pattern of streets. As, as you can see, there is not uh, much criticism that can be generated for this one because it is so realistic that when you take the road and divide it into some uh, plots which are manageable, you can deal at this scale with a plot or at that scale with a plot or what, there's a whole thing and this is the quarry area and that is uh, what we thought was rather realistic even though at the uh, first sight, even though it seemed rather uh, uh, utopic, at the basis of it we found uh, uh, tremendously realistic uh, proposal for uh, Istanbul. And then she elaborated that uh, pattern with sort of uh, places of high density and low density and high density and uh, uh, developed an urban pattern which would be much more sort of freer to uh, implement. And uh, uh, this urban pattern also uh, makes use of many of the uh, different configuration of uh, spaces in the form of courtyards or star blocks and uh, uh, things of that nature. And then uh, she even reversed the uh, urban structure, as you can see. She said that the, the ro roads are the public uh, ownership, so why shouldn't we build on the roads as well to leave the other spaces to be sorted out later. So she reversed the uh, uh, planning process as far as the land ownership is concerned from the point of view of the public benefit, which is very difficult to do, but not impossible. So we found that idea also rather creative. And of course, uh, she elaborated uh, architecturally what kinds of uh, uh, thing that she would like to have, and this is uh, the, the final urban structure that uh, she has proposed. Of course, this is uh, needless to say a sort of conceptual plan. You know, you can never do a city like this in any uh, particular ownership pattern. But the vision uh, of seeing in the master plan that this clarity had uh, impressed us. And she even further elaborated in order to uh, let the various landowners be more creative with their buildings as they like it. And she proposed some sort of structures uh, pinnacling <coughs> above.
So this is the model that she presented to the uh, to the jury. As you can see, how clearly the road structure was defined, and uh, many of the uh, ownership patterns were being uh, uh, sustained. And then uh, she uh, has also proposed. Uh, a freedom of choice to other architects saying that taking up this uh, form uh, it can be interpreted by different owners that we will come and, uh, and that was the sort of image of this uh, new city uh, Kartal to be uh, developed by Zaha Hadid so what we did we, we did uh, uh, was very interesting it uh, in the end uh, uh, put me in a very critical position to have a, a life decision after running the Aga Khan Award for Architecture for 24 years. I thought that I would leave a mark in Istanbul by saving at least to a percentage of the city in some limited format if we can apply this project. So needless to say, Zahadid was the winner of the competition. So I moved to Istanbul and uh, in order to uh, implement the project. So first uh, positive uh, shock was from the Lord Mayor of Istanbul, who's an architect. He told me, sir, professor, these people are uh, at their land, which was $70 per square meter. Now it's 700 after the gossip of the project they should pay for the project and it's not possible you know usually the plans are done by the public sector and the others uh, apply you know so how can a private body would develop a project so i went through various uh, uh, formats whether it could be a foundation whether it could be an association it could be a land holding uh, a company whether it could be a public company and and with the, basically with lawyers, you know, and the legal people who are not the most pleasant, as you may know, we thought that the uh, most versatile structure would be to have an association that would protect the rights of everyone, but it should be represented by the major landowners to finance. So you can see the critical position there. You know, you are protecting public rights, but you have it uh, financed by the private sector, and uh, not that easy. But we established that. It took uh, a year and a half of my time, and I worked completely as a volunteer, because when you get associated with the authorities and bureaucracy, you get you know either soiled or bogged down or uh, dismissed. So everyone is afraid of the volunteer people. I would advise you to do that in your careers, do as much volunteer work as you can. It pays back. And we developed the project, uh, 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 first the client body, then signed the contract with Zaha Hadid, and we developed the project with Zaha Hadid uh, into this stage. This is the stage of the project as of 21st of August. Now it is going to go through the uh, the municipal authorities for discussions and, uh, and approval. As you can see, all these people, the landowners having this much of land and this much of construction, right, they all are, you know, in heaven. And there's a tremendous public uh, support for the project because they have never ever seen uh, any kind of a development like this would ever be in that uh, 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 disused industrial land. So in short, uh, we have uh, groomed the uh, vacant industrial area landowners into new land developers. And there are many, many American companies are coming there because there's not uh, available planned urban land in Istanbul to do anything. So these uh, companies, basically developers and uh, land holding companies are getting in associations with that. But you can see uh, from that uh, what I call the utopic uh, conceptual sketch when it comes down to uh, uh, a plan, uh, you can either uh, call it some kind of a, a 
a dialogue or fit, or you can even co call it a compromise. It depends on from what part you can look. First of all, we discovered that the sea was very deep here. So that elegant structures protruding into the sea was not even a dream. It's not possible to do at all. It was very, very deep, so it would be a very shallow uh, 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 marina, not with much depth, because it goes immediately at this point up down to uh, 40 meters, that's 120 feet, and then even it gets even uh, deeper. And uh, many aspects like that, we discovered that there was a very weak soil on this part, and that should be treated differently. Of course, wherever you see green patches, people are up in arms, why my land is a, is a park, why the school is in, on my land, and those things are all to be negotiated, and there should be some land swap. But these are all in particular order of uh, uh, plots of lands that we are talking about. But altogether, that there is now a vision of uh, uh, a city which at points has uh, uh, high-rise buildings, because this is nothing to do with the silhouette of Istanbul and the urban structure is far away. It's even farther away than La Défense in, in Paris. So we can accommodate uh, all uh, these uh, high-rise buildings with no problem. And this is a major industrial estate which uh, they <coughs> would like to uh, build uh, some housing stock. And these are the uh, courtyard type of uh, uh, developments uh, as we see in many European cities, especially in Hausmann's plan. So that is uh, how the, uh, the, the whole area, this is the urban interchange, has been reformed as uh, uh, in conformity with the original idea of the network and uh, uh, structuring, urban structuring. And this is the area where we would like to propose the Hollywood of Istanbul, where the studios and the film studios and the media would come as a non-polluting industry and, of course, free land. And uh, everyone is excited with the idea, not having the film studios, but the idea of having Hollywood in Istanbul, of course. And these are all from the last presentation of Zaha Hadid to the, the client group. And uh, she even uh, wanted to encourage them to be more creative and more uh, caring. She had uh, proposed some uh, structures like this. Like in Barcelona, when you approach to the crossing, it sort of expands. So the sidewalk becomes a sort of little park walk. And she did it in almost every, every corner. Uh, uh, as a new urban uh, uh, language of experience that one uh, could uh, enjoy in Istanbul. And of course the public buildings are proposed. This is the idea which I'm mentioning. Uh, the sidewalks come rather narrow when they come to the cross-section and there's a sort of urban experience of decision either go here and there and what it becomes a sort of wider patch of sidewalk with more green and it also leads to the courtyards where some of the public uh, activities uh, take place and uh, of course you know in the urban uh, planning schemes when they are done by architects, uh, we need these kinds of things for the urban identity. It is not just, you know, uh, subdivision of land and allocating land uses. There has to be an urban experience which we should be talking about. And Zahadid brings these things as the new urban experience and these uh, calm spaces inside. And, uh, and also she interprets in a sort of different form for the office buildings and the other uh, places around. Then she refers to her experience in Singapore. As uh, you will see, she has uh, won the competition of the master plan with a scheme like that. 
and then she allowed Singapore architects to come and contribute and uh, the language has uh, uh, become uh, their language of architecture as they interpreted her uh, master plan. So she uh, encouraged the Turkish architects or other international architects to come and build with their own style and with their own sort of architectural concept the way they wanted to do. And she also gave uh, examples from her own work. This is what she has done for Dubai. This is a heartache for us, Eric. This is what she is doing in uh, Almaty. And that is the final project that uh, she has uh, developed for Almaty. And these are the examples of her own language. And she says that either I do it or anyone else can do it. And uh, that is uh, how it is. So we are at the uh, stage where uh, this uh, plans need to be finalized, approved, and implemented. And as I said, maybe we cannot stop the third bridge, perhaps the fourth one, and the Bosphorus would remain as a beautiful landscape as it used to be. Thank you very much for your time.